Hello, my name is Carmelita Marshall. Okay, so as you do check my social media websites, I do have a, another name, which is either Bodacious Bay or Curvaceous Bay. Okay, so we're going to go with the government name. All right, so last January, I got fired for deciding to take care of my body. I was overworked. Um, I had to work every day until 5.30 for little to no money. And when you deal with children, you know that that's a job in itself. You're changing about 35 diapers a day. If you count up all the children that you have to take care of, and if you change them at least four to five times a day, that's about 35 diapers. Okay. Also, when you work with people that don't want to do their job, it makes it even more harder on you. So you're doing most of the work. You're doing two or three people's job for this little money. You're overly qualified because you have done this for years. So you know what supposed to be done as far as caring for kids. Okay. So to run through this a little bit, um, the whole time I worked there, it was mess. I have never worked for a black employer. And yes, I'm black. A black employer that doesn't even hire different races. <clears throat> that right there was weird to me because as long as I've been in the work field, I've been in the work field 20 plus years. I have worked for several different major companies from call centers to grocery stores to the federal government, the state. So it's a lot of things that we do on these jobs to keep them so that we can have a little stability. So some things that you would not tolerate normally, you kind of just <clears throat> go with it and, you know, because you, you know that you need that particular job for that particular moment. The job was so stressful and it, it didn't have to be. But if you don't have people carrying their weight, then that's a problem. So if you're doing a lot of work and the other people are not, it shows. The wear and tear on your body. I had several times asked to go to the doctor or to be able to take off. She wouldn't let me take off. So I'm like, okay, I can't continue like this. You know, I have a child that I have to take care of. And if I'm not well, she doesn't have anyone to take care of her. Okay. So... I ended up getting, make a long story short, one week in January, I had been there about seven months, I decided to um, call in because I wasn't feeling well. I had like five different aches and pains. So I needed to take care of me, called in. Okay, she returned my call. Actually, the first day she didn't return my call, so the second day, because I had to call in two days in a row because I was feeling that bad. Okay, she told me to go to the doctor. I went to the doctor to get a doctor's note. It told me to return, I want to say, the following week, which was on Monday. She is the type of person that she would cowardly fire you. So she actually, when she sends you that check in the mail, because we normally get direct deposit, you know you're fired. No matter how you say it, no matter how you try to sugarcoat it, you know that's her protocol. You're fired. <clears throat> so I got fired trying to take care of me. But before I got fired, she was picking on me, trying to find any little thing that she could um, get into it with me about. And I don't have time for this. If I'm doing a million things and the one thing you do is call a parent to see if I remembered to write on a paper that they needed more diapers. Okay, out of everything, you just call them to check that. Not all the one million things that you've done correctly, being that you had little to no help, because the person that worked with you, she always was off. She always took off. She always had to go to the doctor. Or someone in her family had to go to the doctor. Get off with no problems. I'm stuck with the kids. 
over the ratio. The ratio is five per link. So if it's, I'm the only teacher in there and there are five infant babies, okay, five infant babies. I should not have over five and I normally would have seven to myself with no help. So <clears throat> I'm good at what I do. So I handled it. But when you know that you're being taken advantage of, you're not going to continue to do it. So she was just doing, she didn't like the fact that I knew my job and I knew it well. Because I also worked at several, I used to do child care in my own place where I lived in another state. Then in another state, I worked with a diverse group that was medical doctors, lawyers, everybody that made about six figures or more. We were taking care of their kids. Okay. And you know, they don't play right you're not about to play with people kids <laughs> and get away with it so um i worked at a, you know so i, I had a, a lot of knowledge i was actually trying to help her because she had so many issues anyway she had so many strikes against her but you know some people you can't help because they feel like you're the competition or they feel like they've been doing it for x amount of years and getting away with this and get away with that that they don't need your help so again to make a long story short i ended up getting fired while on medical leave because i was going to return that monday all right so when it came down to it um i was out of work i was out of work from january all the way until the end of october of 2023 because I was going to doctor appointments and all sorts of things to try to get me better. Okay, so I have never been so disrespected in my life that grown women don't want to do their job because they're so emotionally attached to something that isn't concerning your job. All right, so, okay, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a known fact. I'm a single parent, so therefore, I rely, I don't say I rely, but until I'm able to um, make enough to not need food stamps or assistance, then I won't even try to get it. But let me tell you about this. So, I've been out of work from January 2023, I put in an application for a TANF. And anybody knows what TANF is, that is temporary assistance for needy families. Okay. That's what you qualify for. You have a child, you have zero income. Okay. So you automatically get it. You know, I have went through several interviews. Um several things that they require for me to do and they will always find a reason not to give me TANF benefits okay so for instance my recertification for food stamps was april 2023 i started putting an application february 2023 thinking that they would rush it they didn't rush it they took their time they took their time to the place that I had an interview and they missed it. They missed the interview that they <laughs> requested for me to attend at a certain time. It's like three o'clock in the evening. It's like three ten. I decided to call. Now keep in mind, this was February that I applied for these benefits. This was March that I was calling because I had an interview um that you have to get when it's recertification time i had it i want to say the beginning of march for those april benefits to be renewed okay so i i, I just couldn't believe it so my caseworker that i had or that was assigned to me she did not make the interview I called her and I explained to her, well, I explained to the person that answered the phone because undoubtedly she wasn't available. She was in another interview, they told me. And so I'm like, okay, if your interview went over, you would have the decency to call me and let me know, okay, I may have to reschedule your time, your interview time, 
slot or I may be a little late. I might be running behind time. It was no communication. So when I called there, they was like, oh, she's still in a meeting or she's is going over or whatever. I didn't hear nothing else. I left my information. They were supposed to call me back. This was a Friday. I didn't hear anything else that Friday. I didn't hear, um, ma'am, I'm going to get back with you on Monday. No, I didn't hear anything. So, of course, I'm going to call again when I had time. So, I called again, still getting the runaround. And they still didn't do the interview until they felt like doing the interview. So, this interview probably wasn't done until like the end of March. So, no matter how you called, you still was not going to get that interview that you was already scheduled for. Okay, so, when we do this interview process, I apply for tenure because I've been on the work since January. It's March. This lady, which was my caseworker, I'm in the state of Mississippi. She said, <clears throat> she asked me, do you want TANF? I said, yes. She said, okay, so you want TANF? And I was like, yes. Okay, we went through all that. The phone interview. I answered all the questions. Of course, I was already getting food stamps, you know, because even though I was working, I still was getting food stamps um prior to me being fired so they were just going to go up a little bit because now i wasn't working and um we went through all of that and she still decided to send me a letter with just the food stamps no tanf at all and so a couple of months went by and i was like why did i not get the tanf and she asked me did i want the did i need the tanf not did I want it. Did I need it? Yes, I need it. I have my own bills. I have rent. I have phone bill and I have lights. And they were in no rush. They took their precious time. So I ended up calling back again. A couple months later. And I spoke with the same case work. I left a message and I was like, okay. And then I think I, they gave me the supervisor and I was like, this case worker asked me, did I want TANF? What was the purpose of her asking me, did I want TANF if she wasn't going to give it to me? When I know I qualified because I'm a single parent, I'm not getting any child support, um, wasn't getting any, any type of income, you know, so How is a person with zero income and a child not able to get TANF? So I still was persistent. No matter how I was getting on their nerves to do their job. They, I mean, I called there. I got so much unprofessionalism. One day I called there and someone picked up the phone. And this is so, now I, I thought most call centers, the calls are recorded. Somebody answered the phone. And they stated, I kid you not, I'm not going to say the words that they used, but they stated, I'm going to keep, instead of saying the curse word, um, messing with such and such to make you mad. But they were so unprofessional, they used the curse word and the word that you would say if you were intimate with the person. I was like, now I know, I'm not hearing this on the line. And why are you addressing this to me? And why does this have, what does, does this have anything to do with you doing my application and getting me some food stamps and saying, no, it doesn't. If you're getting to see your personal feelings about a guy that we probably both know, but I never answered her or said anything because I was still stuck on the fact that she had the audacity to say that over the phone line and it's supposed to be recorded because these, this is the state. Now, um, <laughs> I was just shocked. Okay. So they kept going back and forth with me for some more months. So we wasting time at this point. You just don't want to give me the tan of benefits. Um, we went back and forth. She sent me a, a, a document, a packet for, to fill out in June. So it's June now. We didn't skip all these months and passed from January. I filled out this application in February. I was supposed to have her interview in March. She didn't call me until she feel like it or till she felt like it. Then come to find out 
she didn't even process both applications for the two different programs that she was supposed to do. She just did what she felt like doing, which was food stamps. <sighs> do you know how tired I am? Okay. I don't care how you feel about a person because I don't know any of these people. I've only been here a little over a year. So whatever you know about me, it's because somebody told you or that messy employer that I worked for, <clears throat> you must know them. And they told you something to stop me from progressing. Now, that's sad. If I worked for you and I no longer work for you and you're still trying to pull strings um, to mess up somebody's life or to cause them to be evicted because she actually stated that when I was working for her, if I didn't help her, you know, she must have eventually found out who I was. Um, If I didn't help her, she was going to put me in the same predicament that I was in before which was being homeless. And I kid you not, she meant what she said. I've had to go to court for eviction because they don't want to release the funds of the TANF benefits to a needy family. You get what I'm saying? This is the most embarrassing childish situation, one of the most childish situations that I've ever had to be in. And because I have worked for so many bigger companies, and I've worked for state too, but it was doing something totally different. But I know how the benefits work. I have lived in Florida and Texas. When I worked, I mean, when I wasn't working in Florida for, for a moment, I got the TANF benefits for that time that I was out of work. It came on the same card as your EBT benefits, your food stamps. When I was in Texas, there was another point in time that I had to get benefits um, after a job ended. And I had to, I got a, a card. The EBT benefits was on the same card. The Taylor benefits was on the same card as the EBT benefits, right? Food stamps. This is the first state that I've ever heard that TANF does not come on the same card as your food stamps. Now, the fact that y'all are lying to me and have played with me for a whole year just because you got the power to, it's really, really very <sighs> childish. You know, because people's lives are at stake. You know, I still have bills. You know, I had enough for maybe nine to 10 months of savings. And I have used that to cover my bills for all of these months that they decided to play and not give me my benefits. I also was supposed to get unemployment. If I would've got the unemployment, I wouldn't even worry about the TANF. The reason I didn't get the unemployment because the employer kept lying when she at one point told me to leave before it had even got to the point that she ended up firing me because I went, I was on medical leave. She had this meeting one time because, you know, she was always getting in trouble with the state because her daycare wasn't up to um, code. And she turned the whole meeting about me. Who does that? You have more important things to do, like get this up to code for you be shut down. But no, she feels like she don't have to do it. Um, she can do what she wants. <laughs> it doesn't matter because she owns it. So, to make a long story short, again, this has been months. It is now January of 2024. Today is the fourth date. I have been going back and forth to get TANF with these people. At this point, they should have been backdated it from the time that I applied to up to now. But they refused to do it. So what they were trying to do and they thought I was stupid or slow or dumb or something to that effect. <clears throat> they were trying to take $200 out of my unemployment. Which still would have been less than what my rent is. My rent is five seventy five. dollars That's the cheapest that you can have probably right now. Unless you got a housing voucher or something to that sort in the state of Mississippi. Okay. I don't live to please people. So where I live right now, it accommodates what I make or what I was making at that time. Now, 
I kid you not. <laughs> it has been one thing after another. Like, I mean, I just can't believe people can be this childish because you might have talked to the same guy. And I hate to bring that up, but this is what was said on the line. Because I'm not that type of person. Who you talk to, if they talk to me, they talk to you. It don't have nothing to do with me. You need to check that guy. Don't come for me. You get what I'm saying? So, they just can't get it right in an office. They're all in their emotions over this guy. So, they decided that they want to take $200 out of the unemployment and try to pass it off as if it was 10 if and it came on a whole nother card. Let me tell you. So, instead of this woman, the caseworker being like, do you have a card already? And I was like, yeah, I have a card. Well, I didn't say I had a card because I'm thinking she's talking about like an EBT card because the EBT card is where the 10 of benefits go. And you're talking about TANF. We're having this conversation about TANF and this and that. So, come to find out, they knew I had a card, but they couldn't specify what card they were talking about because they knew that I was supposed to get unemployment. All right. So, instead of paying me, the, they trying to get the $200 out the unemployment, because they sent me out another car. So I had to wait more weeks. This is up until September when I finally was able to um, receive a TANF payment. But it wasn't TANF. It was my unemployment that they had took $200 out of. Right. I think my unemployment was supposed to be like $690 for the month. I want to say that payment was like $450 something. Now we behind on lights, everything. This is September. I applied for this in February. And TANF does come on your EBT card. I don't know where these people get it from, but they must have been doing this for a while. And then they even had the nerve to lie about it because I caught on to them. So because I caught on to them, they was pissed. They was pissed, baby. So they was like, okay. I had actually, I was telling my phone was about to get turned off. Because again, I've been carrying this load for nine to 10 months by myself with no help from anyone else. You know, and like I told you, I had spent my savings to cover me. At that point, I shouldn't have had to do that. You know, that's what it's for. And if I'm not working and I have no income, what are you supposed to do? Release my unemployment if you wasn't going to do right by the TANF. They don't want to do it. They wanted $200 out of it and then lie and say it was TANF. Then I had also been filed for child support. You know, it's kind of all connected. And my child's father hasn't paid a payment in eight years. I don't understand. I can't seem to get a decent lawyer for nothing. Eight years, my divorce has never been finalized. It's supposed to have been finalized when I left him, November 29, 2015. It hasn't been finalized. Um, every time I tried to get a divorce, I have went through the, uh, the uh, when you get help, what is it? The uh, legal aid. I went to legal aid twice in two states. And no one seems to want to grant me that divorce. I don't understand what it is. But when I left in 2015, that was it. I was done. I had done, done my six and a half years. And I tried my best. But, um, and then the fact that my neighbors, most of my neighbors are connected to the people that work inside of the food stamp office, the TANF office. They have connections because some of them are related to the people. So um, they're all in my business. I hear them outside talking about, I want you to go there and steal our benefits. I've heard conversations about, um, um, that um, I'm going to steal her child support. Just all kind of stuff that I didn't know you can steal. Like, I mean, I'm not a thief. But I think like a thief because I've always been done wrong by people that steal. And it's sad because I'm a hardworking woman. And I don't get handouts. And because I don't get handouts, I feel some type of way. Even when I'm supposed to get handouts, I don't get it. As you can see, I still ain't got a standard payment. You get what I'm saying? But let me tell you what she did. What they did. Okay, so... They will always send out letters after the fact so I can miss the appointment for the tenant because they really don't want to give it to me. They want me to be homeless because that's what the last employer said, and they know her. They're all connected, and it's crazy. You can't just let me go 
and go on with your life. You want to mess up my life in the process. When I have a child, I have no respect for a person like that. You're dangerous. And somebody got to stop her. Stop them. Because this is just ridiculous. And they ended up sanctioning me. Because I wouldn't commit to doing 31 hours a week. So it was like 130 something hours a month of work but they called it community service and they tried to change it to the work program okay ma'am for all of this i could just go back to work and don't even have to deal with this to give somebody 130 something hours a month for this little money when you already have wages that i've already earned to get my unemployment like come on can somebody do their job and do it right? Can I actually get a good attorney to represent me? Because at this point, this is a mess. A mess. And I'm still facing eviction because of this. And they don't want to get it right because they said, I got the power to make you homeless. That's an intentional making you homeless. Not because you didn't do what you were supposed to do to get the funds, from the, the state no because they have some type of issue and i told you again it goes back from the employer that i worked for at the daycare she threatens people she threatened me while i was there but i still work there because you don't scare me you don't i mean baby my god is far greater than any person that thinks that they can threaten me and not be dealt with so when I say <laughs> it was my unemployment that they were trying to get a cut from. When I worked for her, she was taking $200 out of my check, trying to make it be for childcare because I let my child come there for the summer. And she was kept trying to get the certificate for childcare to come to her school and they wouldn't switch it. They, cause I had already applied for her to go somewhere else. So they wasn't gonna switch it. So she got mad cause she kept trying to pull it to her school. And they wouldn't do it. So she ended up charging me $200 a month. So when they said $200 taken out of that, I knew who it was. Somebody trying to get a $200 cut. Who else would it be? If it ain't her, who else? So this is a mess. They couldn't get it because I was not going to commit <laughs> to 130 something hours a month for less than $500. I'm not anybody. I, she didn't already work the heck out of me, overworked me, and didn't want to pay me. Um, she paid me between $9 and $10, and then you're taking $200 a month. Ridiculous. And then you want to sit here and play with the unemployment when you know you told me to leave, but I wouldn't leave. They was doing crazy stuff. The employees was doing stuff to make it to get you in trouble, like switching bottles, putting them in different other kids' book sets so it looked like you wouldn't know your job. I've been doing this too long to be playing this game with y'all. They was trying to make you quit. It didn't work. The ones that was trying to make you quit ended up quitting themselves because it wasn't working with me. So they had to find another reason to get me to get me out of the um the uh the daycare. So instead, she, instead of telling the truth, she lied and said that um I quit. When she knows she fired me. Because that's her protocol when she sends you a paper check. When you get direct deposit. So they sanctioned me. And around that September time. Now if you know if it's a tentative case. Which really wasn't. It was an unemployment they was playing around with. Anybody that works in the food stamp office. No. TANF is one program. Food stamp is another program. And because it's two different programs, you cannot sanction a ten of cash case over to a food stamp case. These people, because they mad about this guy, yes, stole three months of my food stamps, totaling $1,500 to also make it hard for me. Then got the nerve to tell me to go get a job for those three months. Yes, when my hurt knee, that I done fell on the job and I hurt my knee, and at this place that I used to work at and couldn't get nothing, they don't have no benefits. They don't have anything for this employer. It was just like, I shouldn't, if I would have did my research and not listen to the workforce who told me to go work for her, 
who still don't want to give me my benefits. <sighs> Baby child, I would have never worked for her. I promise you that. So, <laughs> I am trying to make this story, <laughs> which is my life, go faster than it's coming out. But it's just a whole lot of things I still haven't said because I really don't want it to be about how bad I was treated at this daycare. I really want it to be about the state not doing their part and providing the funds that is needed when a family needs it because of their childish behaviors. And no, I've had hearings. It turned around the supervisor. I don't even know who she is. I had to look up on LinkedIn because I've never met her. and But she is the problem. That is causing all this confusion in the in the food stamp office. It's like the 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 guy who does the hearing, he might say one thing, but then when she gets to it, she's gonna turn it around. And so she ended up saying, you know, that they're gonna sanction my food stamps for a TANF case. And you know that's not true. Because it wasn't TANF because it never made it to the food stamp card. We know what it was. Well, I know what it was. It was the unemployment benefits. So they were trying to get me out of $200 and have me do 130 something hours a month. And then they said if I was in school or college or whatever, you know, that it would only be like 10 hours a week. Okay, so that might have been doable if it really was 10 if that I was doing this for, but it wasn't. So because they couldn't get that $200, they decided to take $1,500, equal, totaling $1,500 in food stamps for three months. And told me to go get a job with a hurt knee. Barely can go down the stairs. Barely could walk down the hallways on this job. But I was forced to go to work. Because they didn't want to give me my unemployment. And they didn't want to give me Tana. To this day, I still haven't got it. And again, they're threatening to put me out. Because somebody else stole my benefits. And let me tell you one thing. Somebody cash it out because people over here in this neighborhood all get food stamps because this is a poverty area. So whoever the 1500 went to, they cashed it out and paid their rent. That's what happened. But again, when you have the wrong people in position and for someone to be that insensitive and to make a statement that you have the power to make somebody homeless just because intentional homelessness, not because you, you didn't do your part. You have carried yourself with what you had for nine to 10 months. And still, they won't do what they need to do over a guy. It's sad. And I'm like, I really need someone that has more power than them to make this right. I need a good attorney. I need someone that can defend me. And get me the money that I was supposed to get. It wasn't much. It was just $690. But I earned that. Do you know how many diapers I had to change? How many threats I had to listen to? How many injuries I got while working for her? <sighs> how much time I had to stay there till 530 and carry the load of two to three people? Even if I know the job and I can do it well, you don't overwork somebody. You don't mistreat somebody just because you're the owner. You don't threaten somebody because you can't get your way. I had to go in my pocket and buy supplies. This is your daycare. But because I believe and I was taught a certain way that after every child that you change, you need to sanitize that changing table after each change. So I would go in my pocket and go get sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, gloves, because she didn't want to give it to me because she was saying that you need to use one box of gloves for 30 days. And you got seven kids and you have to change them five times a day, each child or more, if they do something else in that diaper. But because I was trained the right way on how to do the job, I just couldn't see myself wiping down a changing table with a rag and some soap and water. That's cross-contamination. <laughs> you know, when you try to help people and they just insist on trying to find other things 
about you. Like, I mean, I never seen somebody that every time I entered the room, there was a price tag. If I touched something, the paper towels was $400. You know, you ain't pay $400 for them paper towels. If I, t if it was like a little hose thing, it cost $4,000. But this is only when I enter the room or if I touch something, you get what I'm saying? See, I have tried to work for people my whole life and to put the icing on a cake, she was so messy that she promoted people that mistreated the kids, abused the kids. She promoted people that didn't even come to work or didn't even work while they were there. But you know, mess loves mess. Some people just don't do mess and I'm one of those people. I don't do mess, I'm the truth. And when I say I'm the truth, I stand up, I stand for the truth. If I'm the only person standing up for what's right, I do it. Because I expect everybody to be treated right, no matter what. No matter if it's your own race mistreating you. This is ridiculous. And something really needs to be done about it. Y'all have a blessed day. And let me add, even though I know how TANF and food stamps work, um, what makes it worse is when the persons play around your window and talking noise about if you keep talking to such and such, I'm going to steal your food stamps. That's what they did. But they tried to hide it, hide what they done. But when you have lived in two different states that's far greater and bigger than the state of Mississippi, as far as population, you know how it works. <laughs> and so, because I know how it works, and I've had it in those two different states, nothing changes. It's going to still go on that same EBT food stamp card, the TN of benefits. So, you know, to me, this is just crazy. You know, it, it something has to be done. Um, whew, it's just, I shouldn't be suffering and I shouldn't be going through the process of getting put out because somebody decided to cash it in. Cause baby, everybody have more than one child. Majority of people have more than one child. So I know what I was getting with food stamps. So I know if you have two or three kids, you're getting at least a thousand dollars worth of food stamps. So therefore, no one needed any food stamps. They cashed that out because they never gave me my tandem benefits and helped somebody else pay their rent. But you know, God sees all. And he's going to have to vindicate this situation. Because me, I am tired. I didn't even get a chance to recuperate. Even though she commanded me to go to work. If you're trying to catch up on a light bill, I had to get deferred payment on a light bill, which meant that one of my bills was behind, but I had to break it up because they played around for all these months. So I had to pay a regular bill plus my one bill chopped up into four different payments with me, with every month. So if I had my real my regular bill, I got like maybe forty dollars that I pay on that bill that I needed help with. So I'm paying two bills to catch up. You know, I just started working that job the end of October. By the time you sit here, you done stole food stamps, $1,500. Okay, so because you stole those food stamps, I gotta buy groceries. Me and my child is actually eating maybe 40 or $50 worth of food for two people. That's insane. Then I gotta pay the, like I said, catch up on the light bill that they gave me some grace and mercy with because of this foolishness. And then I have a phone bill. It's crazy. It's crazy. Then I supposed to be able to, it's just, you just wanted me to get kicked out. Like they said, I have the power to make you homeless. So if I got to do all this and you could have just released either my unemployment, my unemployment or the TANF benefits, everything would have been done. You get what I'm saying? Again, y'all have a great day.